Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech. And I know it's been a while since I uploaded a video. I've just been super busy and I haven't had a chance to upload video for the past couple of weeks. But I am back and today we are gonna be doing a fresh Linux install on my desktop PC. So let's get started. Now on my main desktop, I stayed away from Linux for the longest time because my whole production process for YouTube evolves around Adobe products. And since Adobe products is not supported through Linux natively, it's kind of hard for me to decide if I want to switch over. Don't get me wrong, Linux have a lot of good editing software for video, photos, and everything. It's just that I spent so many years learning how to use Adobe, and if I have to start from scratch, it might be tough, but I decide to give it another try now. First order of business, I'm gonna be using Ubuntu Budgie. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I released a video on how to find your own Linux distro. And one of the uh, distros that it recommended me was to use Solus. Now I decided to use Solus on my laptop and man, I loved it. It's rock stable, the desktop looks super pretty and it just works. So I decided to install Ubuntu Budgie on my desktop because I'm more familiar with Ubuntu. I've been using Ubuntu for many, many years and for them to also support that desktop. So for my main Linux install on my desktop will be Ubuntu Budgie. And for anybody who decides to start using Linux or decide to start, I would recommend either one of those, Solus or Ubuntu Budgie, because it's very intuitive, uh, very familiar, very easy to use, and doesn't require much work to learn. Getting through the install process was easy. You just have to stick in the USB and let the process go and follow the prompts if you want to format, change your username, etc., etc. Now, as soon as I boot into the main desktop, first thing I tend to do is to get an update. Everything, like the kernel, all the software, all, all the stuff that needs to be updated, I'm gonna let it update. During that time, I will also do my settings on how I want to look. And I'm a big fan of the menu being on bottom. So that's what I basically did. Move the menu to the bottom, change it, and made it the way I like to look, which is more like a window style. That's just because I'm very familiar with it. All right, so one of the first things I like to do is keep a list of all the software I like to install for Linux. It's because they have weird names and I forget them sometimes. Now, first thing I like to install is Chrome because Chrome has native support for multimedia. So if I'm watching Netflix or Hulu or anything like that, Chrome just supports it right out of the box. So that's something I almost instantly install. Now, next order of business is media players. Now, VLC, I, I, there's no need to be mentioned. You know what that is but there's MPV, which is a genome version of, you could say VLC. It's usually ships with Ubuntu and it's something I like to keep around. I like the look of it. It feels just like VLC. So something I just keep around. I use it most of the time because it's defaults that browser. I mean, defaults that media player, which is fine. Next thing, which is huge is paint programs. Now, Microsoft did two things correct. One, which is their paint program, two, uh, or snippet. And one of the programs that I like to use is Pinta. Pinta is like a, a little bit more advanced version of Microsoft Paint. And it gives you a little bit more options here and there, but ultimately it functions just like it. It's very easy to use. And as soon as you jump into it, you'll, you'll know how to use it. Next big program, it would be GIMP. Now that's like a Photoshop type there where you have layering and blur tools and filters and stuff like that. Now, if you're trying to get into something similar to like Adobe Illustrator, you would use Inkscape more for vector art or lines or plotting, stuff like that. Uh, Inkscape will basically handle everything you need as far as like Illustrator stuff. Now, next order of business is dark table or camera apps. If you're into editing photos, like raw videos, raw files and stuff like that, dark table is for you. It's similar to um, uh, Lightscape or Lightroom. That's what it is, Lightroom. Now for video editors, I've tried Kden Live, which is probably the video editor I'm gonna be trying to learn because it's very similar to Adobe Photoshop. It's non-linear editing. So I might stick with Kden Live as far as video editors. Another editor that I did try was uh, Pitivi. And that, I think that's how you say it, Pativi. Now, Pativi was, it looks really good, but I couldn't get it working. I couldn't import any videos. It just wouldn't work. I don't know why. Maybe it's something that I don't have installed. I don't have a codec installed. I don't know. I just couldn't get it to work at all. Nothing that I try to import, which is MP4, would import. So I kind of put that aside for now. 
Next big one is DaVinci Resolve, which is non-open source, but there's a free version and a commercial version. Again, I couldn't get this to work because the free version will not support the file format that I have unless I pay for it. And last but not least, we have a shortcut. And this editor is buggy. I mean, I couldn't get through three frames. I would love to use this because it's really good for uh, effects and stuff like that, but I couldn't get anything to work. Anytime I try to import a video or do something with it, it would just crash. It's so buggy. So I, I kind of, I'm not going to try to learn this. Now, as far as screenshot programs, I used to use Shutter. Shutter was a great program, but it kind of stopped development. So it works, but there's no updates for it. Budgie does ship with a really good screenshot program and I've been using that and it stays on the menu. So I'm fine with it as long as it works. Now, screen recorders. Uh, there are two. One is native to uh, Linux, which is Kazam. The next one is OBS. OBS is something that I'm sticking with because I stream and it just works. So might as well just install a version that will work. Now, as far as code editing, there are a few apps, but I found that you could install Notepad++ through the software center. So I'm sticking with Notepad++, but you could always use Atom or Notepad QQ. Um, it does emulate Windows to use Notepad++, so it's all right. Uh, as far as games go, I am using Steam. And remember to enable Steam Play and enable Steam Play for all titles and then switch whatever Proton version you want. Once you have that option in, you, you're going to be able to play Windows games on Linux, which is amazing. And I've tried uh, multiple titles and your mileage may vary, but it works. The next big one is Lutris. Lutris allows you to play DirectX games on Linux that is not Steam. And it uses a, a very similar engine to Steam, the Vulkan and the Proton. It's very similar. If you want to install games through Lutris, all you have to do is obviously go to their website and install their platform. And then in the game section, you could just look for the game that you need and it has install script. And once you click on that install script and download the script or just hit install, it will automatically download all the software you need, um, the installer, everything to get the game up and running. So here's an example of me playing Diablo and obviously it's not a very demanding game, but I have so many objects on screen, I'm killing stuff left and right and it runs really smooth as much as, it, as well as it would on my Windows machine. So. I don't have any problems with this. And I've tried other games like EVE Online and it runs just as well. So we have Franz. Franz is a chat client that has multiple tabs that you could talk with multiple clients like Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and all that other stuff. Now I've heard about this other one called Rambox.pro. Uh, that's the website. And I haven't tried this out yet, but it's supposed to be similar. I just don't know which one's better. I've been using Franz. I just never tried Rambox. Last but not least, private internet access. If you don't have a VPN, do so. I mean, it, it protects you from your ISP snooping around. It protects you from your data getting leaked, uh, especially if you're outdoors, if you're on a laptop and you're, you don't want anybody to sniff through your traffic, get a VPN to protect yourself. And I do have a link in the description below, which will help the channel a little bit if you sign up using that link. And again, it's just overall great protection. And I do have a couple of videos on how you could protect your entire house using a Raspberry Pi and a private internet access account. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was just a basic install of what I like to do on my fresh Linux installs. If you guys have any questions, any comments as to what software you guys like to use on Linux, hit it up in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.